We'll move on to our next panel discussion, which is on demystifying the OTT content landscape. As we all know, writers, directors, and producers are creating stories like never before on OTT these days. Over the past couple of decades, digital technology has made it cost efficient to create a new range of content forms. So to discuss on this, we have our industry experts with us. I would like to take the honor to invite Mr. Devendra Deshpande, who is the Chief Executive Officer, Friday Filmworks Private Limited. Can we please have a round of applause for Mr. Devendra Pande? <laughs> Mr. Devendra Deshpande, please welcome. We have Mr. Sundar Aron, Co-Founder and Managing Partner, Locomotive Global Media, INC. Please welcome Mr. Sundar. I would like to take the pleasure to invite Mr. Samir Gogate, General Manager, BBC Studios India. May I have the honor to invite you on stage, sir? <laughs> Along with him, I would like to invite Mr. Vidyut Bhandari, Studio Head, Dice Media, Pocket Aces. Please welcome Mr. Vidyut. And to moderate this discussion, we have Mr. Mitesh Kothari, Co-Founder and Chief Creative Officer of White Rivers Media. May I have the honor to invite you as well. Over to you, Mitesh. Audible? I hope the first session was amazing. We have been talking about uh, the concept of demystifying the OTT content landscape. Uh, I've had some crazy good thoughts already speaking to you guys. So. I think I want to start with the fact that what I want to understand is because it's a blue sky topic, right? There are so many things that you got to go and demystify essentially around the OTT landscape. I want to center our conversation around audience, around Bharat, uh, around technology essentially, right? And, and the fact that I think uh, all of you sitting on this stage are heading organizations that are bringing content that is being consumed. and you know, season after season, I would like to say, or biggest hits, or some of the best regional sensibilities, or as we were talking across the genres essentially, right? So there's a lot of things that you guys are tracking when it comes to content, right? What is this audience actually gonna be consuming? Why should we make something? What should be going across into the OTT landscape? We had a conversation around acquisition and retention content, essentially, right? Where something that is big, something that is gonna be across across into the seasons, right? So. I wanted to start essentially, my first piece that I wanted to ask you is like, let's say today our viewers are pretty explorative in nature or that's what we would like to believe essentially, right? Uh, how do you think the content essentially, it has influenced the offerings that you guys are taking with the change in the audience's consumption pattern? What are the changes you are seeing in terms of selection creation of content and how OTTs are actually picking up that content, right? So I think we can start, uh, Sundar, if you want to take the mic, Devendra, you want to take the mic, whoever wants to go first. Oh. Yes, yeah, have to be. You're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, one thing that we have noticed, we've done some research about the secondary towns and the consumption there. Um, I'm fortunate to be involved with a, a, a linear TV channel broadcaster that's on DD Free Dish. And they did a lot of research in these secondary towns and they found that even within the last couple of years there have been a lot of changes in consumption. Meaning that um, a couple of years ago when we did the same uh, study, we found that the women in the household primarily did not have smartphones. And now, within two, three years later, 80% right. have smartphones. So that, so that consumption pattern that we're talking about is, uh, you know, it's not just about the, the woman of the household controlling the television remote control. Everybody can have their own personalized uh, entertainment experience now. And when you talk about Bharat, you know, it's very important that we understand we're all here. It's important that we understand what's being watched there. I think it's, and that's, that goes without saying. I think that we all got off when OTT and SVOD really started here in India about five, six years ago. We really did a great job getting this industry going and creatively we, we really listened and, and did a lot of programming that was very much geared at the urban, you know, the, the top metros. 
So to my mind, if you don't do research, if you're not out there understanding, not just uh, you know, following trends, but if you're not out there actually really understanding who's viewing, uh, it's gonna pass you by. Same goes with millennials and Gen Z. We're not really producing content for yeah. those, uh, those audiences yet, not really. And so I think there's a huge opportunity there. But again, <laughs> if you're just aiming it for that generation in Bombay, Delhi, Bangalore, then you're, you're gonna miss out, so. Very interesting, so, Devinder, what, what is your take essentially onto the same topic that the audience's preference is changing? Because, uh, you know, Sundar made a valid point. Uh, there's a difference between the Metro audience and the Bharat audience essentially right. in general also, right? And you guys have had content that have touched multiple genres and multiple pieces. So what, how do you look at it? I think the answer lies uh, in the question or the statement that you made initially saying that, you know, uh, multiple genres, multiple formats, you know, the content is so spread out and, you know, it's very, very difficult to pinpoint that what is working, what is not. As a production house, I mean, we'll only tell the stories that we are excited. Right. We will not really, because, you know, we are a boutique production house and I'm speaking only on behalf of Friday. Uh, we are a boutique production house, we'll only focus on stuff that we are excited, which we think we can do justice to. So, irrespective of, uh, I mean, do the content define the trends or do the trends define the content is also a question, right? right. So, <clears throat> couple of good programs work and then suddenly, you know, the audience preferences happen there, it'll throw up a new trend, right? And so, so that's an ongoing process. But purely as a production house, we will only look at the subjects and it might not have been done before. And way before even I was there, I mean, yes. if somebody would have bought a movie to a studio saying that, okay, it's a thriller, uh, but it's got two old guys, you know, it, n no stars, yeah. right? Uh, would a studio do it? Probably no, saying that, no. you know, it doesn't work. Too and, risky. And that movie was a Wednesday, right? right. So, and of course, it, it defined a new uh, way of uh, filmmaking again, right? So, yeah, I mean, we would rather rely on, you know, that content will keep defining new trends. So, yeah. Very interesting, very interesting. Samir, what's your take? I, I saw you going for the mic, so you're in yeah, BBC's I'm, take. I'm going to react to what uh, Sundar was saying when millennials. I think what OTT has done is it's actually allowed us to cater to this young adult TG. And in fact, platforms are so focused in trying to cater to them today, Sundar. Like, uh, we've been able to do that successfully with something called as Kesi Ayari on Woot now in its fifth season or uh, with what Mini TV is trying to do is catering to this TG. So I think what OTT has done is it's allowed us to operate at both spectrums. You've got the young millennials at one age watching a Kesi Aria, and you've got uh, the, the family audience trying to watch in a criminal justice, special ops, or what Vidyut produces. So I think OTT has actually allowed us to operate specifically to different TGs, and I'll use Nimisha's favorite word, what she uses, the word taste cluster it has allowed us to cater to these various taste clusters. So a taste right. cluster of young adults, families, male-centric content. So OTT has actually allowed you to produce content specifically for these different Correct. TGs. Correct. Well, I'll, I'll come back to you though. I have a point around Gen Z and millennials, but I, yeah. I would want your view on it. Hello. Um, thanks, Samir. Samir's brought up our favorite word, which is young adults. Exactly. Um, that's pretty much what DICE is known for. Yes. Um, we started way back, just, just quickly, I just wanted to just talk about, since he was talking about young adults, uh, we started way back in 2015 as a content first digital company. Correct. And uh, pretty much most of our shows were young adults, slice of life for uh, the urban audience. So we Correct. did little things, we did what the folks, we did adulting, uh, and a lot many shows. Right. Uh, as we progressed and as we started, first we were making actually content for our own DICE YT platform. So that's something which, which had a lot of Gen Z and the yes. young crowd. So obviously we were making a lot of content for them. But as we started making content for the OTT platform, the content also started changing while we stuck through to the young adults. Right. Um, however, like for example, the show which we made, Ghar Wapsi for yes, Hotstar. The one very recent. Um, it, was, it was based out of a tier two city, Correct. Made, uh, made in such a way that everybody identified with it. 
So, uh, yes, we are making a lot of shows, but we need to sort of adapt as per the audience preference and constantly keep uh, tweaking our content accordingly. Interesting. So, I think for all of you, because a very valid point you brought out. So, uh, we, we also run a Gen Z research arm completely, right? And one of our takeaways at White Rivers Media has been that we Gen Z do not feel that there is enough content representation that is there at this point of time. Uh, while I completely agree, even let's say little things, right? One of the shows that, uh, you know, I've enjoyed it through and through. I believe the shows are still targeted towards millennials or 25, 26 year olds, right? Uh, but given the fact that OTTs would want younger audience and the newer ones who are going to pay, what is your individual take? I, I mean, I heard Sundar, I heard you, but do you really think that we are catering to a 21, 22 year old Gen Z today onto the OTT platforms? Do we have content or also to trail it off essentially is that something I always wanted to ask you guys was that on your end, when you're creating the new content, do you have a Gen Z participation when the creation process is happening in any way? Um, the creative team actually uh, at DICE, uh, everybody is below 28. Uh, the pretty much the entire creative team is below 28. Uh, you, since you were talking about the content on OTT, for example, I'm just going to take uh, Amazon Mini, for example. Um, yeah. the, one of the most popular shows on Amazon Mini is a show called Crushed, season one and season two, which is basically on, uh, it's based, it's a school life. Uh, we are currently shooting uh, season three and four together. Actually, we're doing it together because we don't want the kids to grow up and the three looks very different than right. four. But the fact is that we are actually making content. Uh, we've got uh, adulting, we've got a uh, few more shows since we talk about uh, Amazon Mini but we are actually making content for uh, the Gen Z. Uh, okay. I'm going to agree with, with you on that. I think that audience is there on, on, on networks today. The networks are aware of that audience. Correct. The briefs are pointedly given basis the data they have on their sure. audience. Uh, as for your second part of the question, are the creators also as young as they are? In fact, today, uh, most of us would be using dialogue writers who come from tier, tier two, tier three towns who are not experienced, but we just want the lingo right from them. Uh, the 30-year-olds can't write for 16-year-olds. So we are, we are experimenting. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Absolutely. But that, that, that piece of content needs to look organic to that 16-year-old. And you can only do it right if it's been written by an age equivalent Someone, person. Uh, it has to be real, essentially, at the end yeah. of the day. So the, your take on this? Well, I, I think that the SVOD platforms, we would like them to be able to invest more heavily in those kind of shows. Uh, but where are these viewers? They're on YouTube, they're on social media, of course, TikTok, not, TikTok's not there anymore, but yes. all of, that's where they're getting their content. So a show to really break out in, for that generation on some of the SVOD platforms that we're talking about, um, you know, it, it, I don't think it's happened yet, maybe on mini TV, and, and obviously that's a lower investment, yeah. basically, the, the scale of those shows. So yeah. I think they can take a shot at a number of different shows, and, and uh, actually, that's a very interesting platform to me in, in many ways, not just uh, age group, but also uh, demographically when it comes to the cities and stuff. So I think AWARD and SWARD answers that question, yeah. right? That's yeah. the reason yeah. why uh, young millennials are on AWARD and not Interesting. Devin, your take on to this uh, I, content creation for this generation? I think just look at the last few uh, major hits, whether it's Mukbir, whether it's Cam, uh, you know, many more, Family Man, Farzi, you know, uh, Rana Naidu, Khaki yeah. from our end. <laughs> I, I would like to believe that there was a lot of Gen Z which was also consuming this content. Correct. Right? So, I don't think there's specifically something targeted to Zen, uh, Gen Z. I mean, you would just want that target to, you know, have a mass appeal, you know, cut across spectrums, right? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, so if your question was that, you know, is there specific content only targeted to Gen Z? Yeah. Uh, maybe, I mean, yeah, of course, I think TVF and uh, even, uh, you know, some of the st stuff that DICE does yeah. is actually quite great at that little things and all. but. 
I do believe that even little things will go beyond just Gen Z okay. and not just be limited to a Gen Z. So yeah. I, I, think I, I just, sorry. Please. I, I was just going to add that I think a lot of the issue is also that when we build our shows, the cycle time is yes. way too long. So that is the issue here, especially from, from a platform perspective. They spend two years getting something up and going. And that's not always their fault. It's also our fault. But I think what probably, like, Vidyut, and I know they, you guys move very fast. Uh, that's, that's the model that we should all have and that the platform should have. They should move quickly into shows. I mean, when it takes us seven months to post a series of eight to ten episodes, that's ridiculous, you know? And then, of course, it takes a year and a half to finish writing it and get into production. So if we had figured out if the, if the platforms made their decisions a little bit more right. quickly, even if they reduced the budgets, then I think a lot of the experimentation and figuring out or leading the trends would happen a lot quicker. True. I mean, that's true, right? That's, a, that's like an automotive industry problem. You're making something today that's going to release after three years and you don't know where technology and every other thing will go. It's, it's like actually if you see amongst the four of us, we're all making cars of different sizes yeah. and uh, uh, the very different cars, all four of them. And so obviously the bigger cars take that much more time to make and yeah. the smaller cars you can actually make it, uh, make it much faster and you can keep that rolling much faster. But then it's also not in your hand, right? As we were talking outside, OTTs can may suddenly make a decision to release something now or hold something and that also impacts your own business completely, right? How, how does that go for you? So, yes and no. Uh, Sometimes your deliveries do get stuck if, if there's a change in plan at the platform end. But that's part of the game, like, yeah. uh, uh, you, you have to live with it. <laughs> you just move on. Okay. Going, going back to the content landscape, right? I believe OTT uh, came silently, but today it has become a very, very integral part of the entertainment landscape, right? I think the kind of number of hours and the number of times per week that the content is being consumed on OTT. And also, I think we've reached a space where I need to watch my OTT content, right? Like mentally, the audience has reached there, right? So in this kind of a scenario, and especially where I think OTT 2.2 is going to start, right? Now where audience is going to become more demanding, right? Because till now audience was just experiencing something and enjoying that, oh, I did not know I had an option to kind of get something like this. And audience is going to become very, very demanding. To you, what is going to be the journey? Like to each of you individually, how do you see the journey of the original content going from here? Right? And I want an answer from an understanding that what you know about the audience, but also you know what you're producing. So what is it that India is going to actually consume when it comes to original content in the future? Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, young adult content is here to stay. Uh, it's, it's highly underserviced. There's a huge demand in that genre. So all the content that uh, you'll see creators doing in the young adult space is right now all original stuff. Yeah. Uh, and there's a huge demand for it. There are no two thoughts about that. At the premium end of the spectrum, your bigger franchises like your uh, Devane's Special Ops or the criminal justice that we do at BBC or something like Out of Love, I think uh, the platforms also have to hold on to the existing base. It's not just about getting the new base, but Correct. also catering to the current loyal base that's paying a certain amount of fee. Absolutely. Uh, Sundar's Ray is going to be in its second season. So I'm seeing these premium properties will be there to stay. So I think you'll operate in the young adult space at a lower price point, then there's going to be the new TV++ as we call it, yeah. which is slightly longer than uh, OTT shows, but lesser than your daily soaps. Correct. And then at the premium end, you'll have your big ticket uh, tentpole properties like Special Ops or Ray Donovan or uh, your Criminal Justice or your Rudras of yeah. the world. I think. So you'll see these three different buckets clearly existing. Because the platforms are very clear because they're very clearly calling it acquisition shows and retention shows. Right. So all the big premium shows which we just talked about uh, are your acquisition shows because that's, that's currently because they want more and more uh, new view, uh, subscribers to come in. And it's these big ticket premium uh, shows which are going to bring, it, bring in the audiences. And mm -hmm. once they come in, then you will need your bread and butter shows. You need the catalog content to keep. You'll need, them. yeah, you'll need to constantly keep them. So, so that's the content which is already being made, and like uh, Samir said, this whole TV plus plus model is, 
is expected to come, uh, which is which we all just <laughs> grappling with it. But okay. yeah, it's expected to come. I just want to add one thing uh, before Sundar says. Uh, what these premium properties also do is that when you drop a season two or a season three, there is an audience who hasn't seen season one. That helps, and we had this data on yes. Criminal Justice three that Hotstar realized that when they dropped three with a Madhav Mishra, they had a new set of audience that came into sample one and two. So there was a week uh, in in the launch of Criminal Justice season three that you had all the three franchises one, two, and three in the top ten. I think that's the power of franchises that. Uh, platforms are erring to create or um, trying hard to create right now. And that's where the new subscribers come, existing subscribers also getting what they want. I think that's what the premium set of shows land up doing for these. Absolutely. And, and uh, it's necessary, right? Because it's such a clutter right now when it comes to content. If there is a big show with a season three, it will force the audience ideally to… Also, some of the things that we've realized because in the marketing end, right? We realize that still the biggest draw is the word of mouth. If it's the person I know recommends the show, right, then, then I'm, I'm still going to go and watch it. It's not always about the reviewers and the influencers. Yes, that always influences. But somebody in my friend circle, someone in my office, somebody whose content choice I trust, yeah. moment they say, you know, guys, this is good, then you're going to go and watch it. So I think that does drive with the multiple seasons. Right. Then your take. No, I'll just add another point to what you said. So some of these shows are not just doing well in India, but across multiple countries as well. Okay. So that's one trend which will emerge that soon we'll have a jackpot from India, which yeah. will actually become a global uh, franchise. And we, we, I mean, platforms do keep sharing certain data with us. Some of them is openly available. So some of these new shows uh, are trending not just in India, but across multiple countries, right. you know, 13 or 15 uh, different pockets for multiple weeks as well. So, you know, that's exactly why, you know, a lot of these sh shows are going into uh, repeat seasons. But from an Indian originals perspective, when you say multiple countries, are we seeing consumption where the Indian diaspora is there? Or is it even when the Indian diaspora is less but the country is showing certain… Because there are some countries like we watch Turkish content, we watch Korean Absolutely. content, so Absolutely. that happens, right? Absolutely. So, currently I think largely it is the Indian diaspora because we are everywhere and in, <laughs> true. And in, and That's in true. big numbers. But, uh, you know, a couple of uh, shows uh, recently, especially something that Amazon did, I don't remember the name of the show, mm -hmm. uh, seems to have also a lot of international traction, okay. you know, coming into that. And we see that with a lot of Bollywood movies. True. So, you know, there's no reason why it will not transcend into the series as well. But so, I have an interesting uh, story on this one. I actually said that last time also. And uh, this was actually… We were, we were actually making uh, Little Thing season four. Right. We actually wanted to shoot in Poland, but obviously the pandemic hit. And we were meeting the film commissioner from Poland. So the Polish film commissioner was down in India. And uh, we went to meet her for permission. And her first question was, will Dhruv and Kavya get married? Wow. So, wow. And this was uh, a foreigner. It wasn't the Indian diaspora also. So we were shocked. So it's just like, like they were saying, uh, our content actually transcends and people do watch. If it's good right. content, uh, there is no boundaries. I agree, I agree. But, but do you think we're still waiting for this one Indian show that's just going to explode onto the global scene? You yes. You think that's going to be likely? Absolutely. Yes. Certainly waiting for that. I mean, uh, Korea, South Korea has had a lot of success True. with their movies and their movie won the best film. Yes. Uh, we're not there yet. Um, and that's frustrating to me. I suppose we will have our moment. The good thing is that kind of China's off the table. Nobody really wants anything from China anymore. Or don't want to deal with China. In this space. <laughs> it seems to be the case. I mean, you know, even years ago, I remember in the 90s and, and early 2000s, Chinese films were making a big impact around the world globally. Uh, Crouching Tiger was the first $100 million dollar box office foreign language film in America, right? But they didn't really follow it up. I didn't see anything really big come out of that, and Korea has really taken, taken its place. So India, we naturally should be also jumping into that or having a film or a series that makes that. Certainly our technical, technical quality is there. Um, I think our writing is getting better and better, but probably that's part of what's holding us back as well. Interesting, interesting. 
So, I want to bring your attention to another thing, like I want to pick all of your brains essentially because all of you have championed this in one or the other way. Uh, I want to understand the rise of the regional content consumption from you guys, right? Because at the end of the day, you're the ones who are making it and how that regional is becoming national, right? Uh, in terms of, let's say, example, Rana and I do when you say that, right? And what is the importance when it comes to OTT to bring the stories from every tier of India, right? Because it's no more the urban phenomena essentially, right? In fact, I believe sitting here in the urban space, I'm also looking for an authentic story that's going to come somewhere from the heartlands of the country, right? So individually from the houses that you represent, how do you, each of you actually are looking at regional, regional going pan India and the sensibilities of every tier of this country? Let's start with the British organization <coughs> first. Uh, so, actually we're already there. Uh, it's not that the platforms are not producing content. Uh, we right. did something for Z5 last year called Galivana, which was a Telugu original. We recently produced our first Hotstar Telugu original called Dead Pixel uh, for the uh, regional market in Hyderabad. Uh, we are in talks with another network. For so, all the platforms are today lo looking at the southern markets to be specific. Right. Uh, with a very, very fine focus. The TTM markets are very important yes, at yes, this yes. point. So all those four markets are uh, extremely important for them. I, I don't know if it was a Deloitte survey or a Deloitte study that recently put that could be the next 25% of the consumption could come from Correct. digital markets. So these markets are of importance. They are of importance to us. Uh, we are present there. We want to grow in those markets. Uh, it's just that to maintain that quality, you need time. You need to have the right story. Uh, the process takes time, right? Uh, but regional is a, is a very deep focus. In fact, we've produced Jhalak for many years in southern languages. It's not that we've not produced there. Hmm. So content has been produced uh, down south, uh, but on the OTT world now, you'll see far more stories coming out from uh, platforms. But how about the, the gestation period, right? Like, did you know south was always this important that it's going to rise so quickly in terms oh, yeah. of monetary not, value? No, not, not, not. So then it's going no to take you some time it. to catch up or you're ready to kind of go all in into it right now? I'm saying the turnaround time there is much quicker than Hindi. Uh, depends on what kind of stars and budgets uh, that the platforms yeah. are looking at. But you could be out with a story in six months there. Nice. Uh, from start to finish. Uh, and uh, all the four platforms are like heavily invested in, in regional Correct. markets right now. And you will see a lot more content on their networks right now. Interesting. So when you say regional, you mean regional language? I mean no, regional yeah. language, regional sensibilities. Okay. Uh, but because for us, Khaki was a very regional story. It came right. from Bihar. The next one would be from Bengal. Correct. But of course, it will be in Hindi. You know, so these are still stories which are extremely regional. Correct. The heart, the milieu, the tonality, everything is very regional. But the mode of language is uh, Hindi. It's the Hindi, you right? Know, so then you're yeah, targeting yeah. the bigger audience base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, actually, that's what I'm asking is, right? Also that... From a consumer standpoint, today, I think somewhere we started looking for stories that are coming from the heartlands of the country. Right. Absolutely. And they have to be true. They, they have to be researched well. The language has to be right. The setup has to be right. Absolutely. Right? Otherwise, you're judging the content very, very yeah. fast. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, but from a creator's narrative, how are you looking at it right now? No, so for us, you know, it's always local stories. Uh, you know, if I can add a layer with global appeal. But it's heartland local stories. So if the, if the story is uh, from Bihar, then of course our writers are from Bihar, you know, the tonality, everything needs to be very, very authentic. Even for Khaki, you know, we went actually and shot in the actual locations where the events had taken place, right? Ditto for, uh, you know, the second season will be going into that particular place, the writers will be from that place, uh, not for anything else, but you know, just to get the, the entire grammar right. Yeah. And you know, that becomes very essential, right? We did a movie called Kon Praveen Tambe. Uh, that's a Hindi movie that's on Disney Hotstar. It was a direct-to-digital. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was a very Marathi story at heart. Right. Right, and we tried to do that as a theatrical. But then, of course, COVID and, you know, the theatre situation was very different. So, we then had to convert that into... Uh, uh, the language had to be changed to Hindi. Right. And, of course, the dialogue, screenplay, you know, it, it went uh, through some modifications. So the point I'm trying to make is, yes, I mean, all of us are actually looking for regional stories, <laughs> right? The mode of language could be different, but they're yes. still very regional stories. And the language will, def you know, depend on 
the commercials, the expertise, uh, you know, how the platforms are looking at it. Right. right? And all of those factors might come into play. I mean, we couldn't do Kon Praveen Tambe in Marathi as a theatrical. Correct. Right? But would we have loved to do that? Answer is yes. Uh, so we did a, a little work uh, in the regional, not too much work. Um, what happened was when AHA, uh, which is a Telugu app, yes. when they were launching, uh, the first thing what they did is they reached out to us because they wanted to make, uh, because they were reaching out to the young adults, they wanted slice of life content. So what they did is uh, uh, they reached out for some of our shows which we did, adulting and what the folks. Right. And we were actually almost behaving like a format company where we, uh, where we gave, where we made these shows, where we adapted these shows into Telugu and those were the first, it was part of their first late which got launched. Okay. And uh, stories are universal so, uh, and cut, cut through and those did, those did really well. They did well. Uh, there's lots in the plan but there's so much work we're doing so I think we're just a little uh, <laughs> busy with everything. Nice, nice. Oh, no. Uh, go to my last, second last piece and I think we'll wrap up after that, is the fact that something that our continuous research at this point of time is showing is that the audience is looking for more immersive experiences, right? And that dovetails into the fact that how is technology impacting your business at this point of time, whether it's creation, whether it's viewing experience. I mean, today you look at Big Boss or you look at IPL, there has been a whole interjection of technology suddenly from an audience perspective. Uh, you know, we happen to work with Sony Live and we know that how integration of, you know, you see the content and you can play and you can interact with the content right now. You've seen uh, content such as Bandersnatch also. So, individually, uh, like, have you seen the impact of technology coming to your business also? From an audience perspective, are you creating content or do you have demand to create content that will have certain level of augmentation around it? Has that, has that demand come to you guys still now from OTT platforms? No one's going to... Well, I think that me. ingenuity really has to come from the platform, right? It has to start from there because I'm, I'm ha there's a lot of stuff I can do in the show itself uh, as a producer. Uh, not just uh, advertising or sponsorship stuff, but there's a lot of new technology that you can use to... Uh, yeah, build in different messaging, sponsorship messaging, but the platform has that control. Right. Now, if the ownership changed and they gave us some ownership in, in the shows, which would be great, <laughs> then we could be a little bit more innovative. Uh, but I think you're right. The more touch points you have for your content or for your brand, the better. Kind of lends itself a little bit more to the reality stuff that you brought up, Big, uh, big Boss and... Uh, even Shark Tank, there are, yes. you can create multiple ways of, 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 of connecting with the content. I think it's a great challenge for us producers to figure out what are the other ways, because otherwise you're just waiting on the platform to come up with good ways to promote and market, and, and then you contribute to it uh, with BTS and whatever else you can, but at the end of the day, it can get limited by what their marketing uh, initiatives are, because you're not an owner. Samir, your take, because BBC has been using tech in a different way. I think globally these guys, uh, are folks in London, uh, Blue Planet or Prehistoric yes. uh, Planet 1 and 2 for Apple TV, I think they've used technology as best, like you're seeing dinosaurs as if they really existed the way they've shot uh, Prehistoric Planet 2 uh, for Apple. But isn't that also the OTT demand because Apple wants Absolutely. the content at that level? I was, right I, I was going to just say that, that there's a demand for that kind of content. Uh, there is an expertise sitting in London that can produce such kind Correct. of content. Look at the Doctor Who franchise and what they have done with it using technology. Love that. I'm saying, can we do it? Yes. Is there a demand right now? Probably no. Mm -hmm. Will the demand come? Don't know. Will the, will the demand come on the, on the budgets for just one country? Um, See, we have a lot of still, as I think Devin was mentioning, we have a lot of our original stories still to tell in India, from different parts of India. Uh, once we have penetration in all our tier 2, tier 3 towns, the way the platforms need it, I think they would want to first cater to that audience with stories which are more closer to home, right. rather than a prehistoric planet 1 or 2. Because that content can still be available in India through licensing deals. Do yes. they want to produce it here? Not sure We right don't know now. that. I think just to add on to that, gaming is a part of pop culture any which ways. Uh, 
you know, some of the, uh, and we know companies which are in investing a lot in the VR, AR tech, right? Right. So once that becomes much more affordable, I think every production house is actually looking at things from a more of a franchise and a universe perspective and not just as a content piece, right? But yeah, it will only take shape when, you know, the technology also becomes affordable and, you know, people start consuming that. VR glasses, for instance, you know, once right. that becomes very uh, easy to wear, you know, uh, and people are spending more time on that, you know, this content will catch up. Okay. Yeah. But you, you think then again, moment this content catch, uh, I mean, moment the tech comes in, right? There's going to be a whole new way of it being disrupted, the content space completely. Right. You think the new players might enter or you think it's going to be the current players essentially because… Of course, the new, new players will always keep entering. I mean, you, you can't, you know… No, because we were also speaking about consolidation, right? right? That at some point of time, I think moment too many players happen, consolidation also has to happen. Right, right. But the tech will give a kind of a segue for new people to come in essentially. I, I mean, look at your own company, it's a great example, right? right. There were the group M's and the yes. publicists which were the giants and then suddenly, you know, Correct. White uh, River comes and, you know, disrupts a lot of things. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so there always will be a play for all of that. But the point I was trying to make was that every content that we are, including BBC, you know, DICE, whatever they are working on, it's basically seen in as a universe and not just as a content piece which will right. go to a couple of seasons. How you spring that universe into action will depend on how the technology also plays out. Interesting. But, but I'm sure they are geared up for that. So, yeah. right. so yeah. I, I think the existing players will adapt to technology. There might Correct. be new entrants, uh, but the expertise that the existing players have and have built will be to their advantage uh, with the new technology that will come in. Interesting. I think I want to bring it to the close with one last important piece, essentially, is I think audience would be very interested to know. From all of you individually, I need one statement each that what's actually going to be the state of OTT content in 2024 in this country? 2024, next year, what's actually going to be the state of OTT content in this country? Because each one of you have this different viewpoint and I want to bring that together for a heuristic perspective saying, ki, okay, this is how actually the landscape is. Let's actually go down to demystify it. So whoever wants to take this first, your statement for 2024. Isn't that question more for the OTT guys here, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Aha, but content you guys produce. We want to produce that, but yeah. Any of you guys take that. See, the platforms today are very, very specific in what they want. Right. I think we are all catering to a particular demand. And looking at what the demand trends today are, um, my view of 24 would be that uh, young adult is here to stay. Correct. That content you is going that. to thrive. Yes. And I think the premium will only get more premium. Okay. Very interesting. And you, I mean, young adult is showing continuous signs that is going to keep getting consumed more and more. Interesting. So I think uh, we'll see the business model changing a bit for producers and okay. their relationship with, with platforms. Uh, a little bit latched on to what I said earlier about, about cycling, about the timelines having to change. I think the way for that to change is that the producers themselves take on more of the ownership and risk of uh, production. Okay. Uh, so hopefully in 24 we'll see that happening because it'll just lead to a better market for content if we producers have upside. Otherwise we're kind of just you know, when we're working on commission, it's, it's, it's great to do that. It's a business, but we're sort of glorified Uber drivers now, you know? I mean, at the end of the day, if we have a bit of ownership, we have the upside, we should be rewarded for the success that uh, uh, any of our creativity leads to. So I'm hoping in 24, we'll see that. It'll probably start more in Western markets. You, you see all the the disruption that's happening because of the strikes and stuff, it's going to lead to a different sort of business model there. And I think maybe it'll wave through the rest of the world, hopefully. So if I, if I hear you right, you're saying is that the relationship is going to change in a way where you will take more risks, right? 
I think, I hope so. I think it has to change. I think you're going to see a lot of capital after the world war, the European war ends and stuff. I think you'll see a lot of capital looking to get back into emerging markets and India will Good. be at the forefront of that. Uh, that capital isn't going to go to China or Russia. It's going True. to come looking for the next big market. And India is the best media market in the world. Good. So I think capital will come here. And capital coming here to India for producers like us isn't going to be interested in the commission-based market or model. Could They're going to want to come in and see a different model that's, that gives more upside to the, uh, to the producer. So I'm hoping that happens in 24. Unfortunately, maybe Putin will hold out and it'll be 25 before the world gets stable and you see... The but, it, but it's going to come sometime. Change. What? But it's going to come sometime. This I think so. It has happen. to. It, it has to evolve. Yeah. Yes. It has to. Very interesting. So exciting times, uh, 2024. But I'd just like to leave it with uh, the consumer or the viewer is getting more and more discerning because he's been watching so much content. He's been give, getting so much content that right now he has to choose if I have to spend 10 hours, I really need yeah. to know what, because my time is most important. Correct. So therefore, uh, whether it be big shows, premium shows, it's finally going to be the content. It's going to be storytelling. Um, I don't think gimmicks will work so much. The more, the, if the story cuts through, uh, the con I mean, we've always been saying content is king and content will always remain king. A good show will, will make it through and people will, will sort of sift the good shows from the bad shows. Right. And good shows will be made. And I, I mean, if you even look at it, it's such an interesting thing, right? I always think that today the content that's coming on OTT, there was no space possibly for it on to the theatrical releases. There might never be space for it on the TV. It's only this medium where you can do this and now suddenly it has exploded. So to take your point away is essentially that good content still going to cut through completely no matter how much it is out there. Uh, so 2024. Going to say, 24 is five months away, nothing is going to change. Nothing <laughs> Let's put it December 24 for you and you tell me what it's going to be like. So let's see, I mean, I, I agree with all three of them. <laughs> but, so. oh, perfect. I think, I think we can close this. We've got the views for the next year. Right? Thank you so much for your time, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for uh, giving us such an interesting session and letting us know about the industry's uh, perspective also on the content. So, uh, wonderful session it was. May I please request everyone to give them a huge round of applause for such amazing session. Now, I'll request... Uh, Mr. Mitesh to kindly felicitate all our esteemed speakers and then my turn would be there to felicitate you as well. Thank you so much everyone for taking out time for us and being a part of this conversation. And I hope you all are sharing your perspective on your social media handles tagging us using the hashtag Widnet2023.